Hello, I'm Dr. Mary Warnock, Director of the School of Human Environmental Sciences here at the University of Arkansas. The program you're about to see examines one of the historically significant and socially important programs on our campus, child development. Within the next 30 minutes, we'll tell you of our program's long history, describe our current student experiences, and share with you our vision for the future. Child development is vital to our community, state, and country. The students who graduate from our program have and will continue to go out into the world to play a significant role in the positive development of young children. We feel that there is nothing more important than to give a child the best possible path forward in life. That path is achieved through educational programs such as ours here at the University of Arkansas. After you have viewed this program, we encourage you to visit our website for more information. Thank you and enjoy the program. The University of Arkansas School of Human Environmental Sciences contains within it one of the most influential programs of study in human development, child development. This program of study gives students at the university the opportunity to work in a laboratory environment while promoting a healthy learning environment for young children. From the outside, these facilities appear to be child care centers. However, within these walls, an effective education is being passed from child development faculty to the next generation of caregivers, educators, and specialists. Students enrolled in this program are taught developmentally appropriate skills, both in the classroom and in the lab. In the next 30 minutes, we'll examine the founding of the program, its current role at the University of Arkansas, and where the program will go in the future. We'll look at what impact the program has had, not only on the state of Arkansas, but globally. Children have played an important role at the University of Arkansas. As early as 1911, children have been on the Fayetteville campus. They were pupils in the university training school. Many children who passed through the training school would go on to lead successful careers, including Senator J. William Fulbright. This program, administered through the College of Education, brought young children into a laboratory of learning for both child and student. The training school program was designed to give new teachers laboratory experiences in the classroom before sending them out to instruct in the real world. As part of the 1862 Morrill Land Grant Colleges Act, participating universities were to support agricultural education to their local area. When the land grant colleges were formed uh, and the legislation was signed by Abraham Lincoln, the colleges were to uh, support and emphasize engineering, agriculture, and the practical arts and home economics came under the practical arts. Home economics was originally associated with food and nutrition, but in addition to that, we've always emphasized child development, family living, family life, and so those courses that were appropriate for those areas have always been taught. In 1925, the College of Education would reach an agreement with the Home Economics Department that would have a lasting impact on the university. The agreement between the Dean of the College of Education and the Dean of the College of Agriculture allowed for the training school to begin instruction of home economic students. In the early days of the program, the emphasis was on vocational home economics education. 
and that program was done cooperatively with the College of Education. The students took their education courses in the College of Education and their subject matter courses in the Department of Home Economics. The education faculty prepared the students for their student teaching so that they could go out into the public schools to do uh, appropriate student teaching. The school year of 1929-1930 introduced another ingredient to the child development study at the university. Professor George Newton Cade, a graduate of the University of Chicago, came to the campus in 1925 as a professor in the College of Education. By 1930, he had assumed the role as director of the training school. It was also in 1930 that Professor Cade had begun instruction of a series of new courses for the General Extension Services, the precursor to the School of Continuing Education. His first class, The Whole Child, was a guide to aid parents in raising their young children. In 1931, Cade wrote the course Introduction to Child Study. It was paired with Professor Ruth Strang's text as a study of child development. The course material focused on the development of a child from birth through young adulthood. The scope of the course was aimed at how children learn and how to adapt to their individual learning needs. Another course appeared in 1933 titled Child Personality Development, written by Professor Gary Cleveland Myers. This course studied the relationship between parents and their impact on child personality growth. In the modern era of study, we call this the study of human relationships. It wasn't until the creation of the New Deal that the program would see its next important shift toward a student laboratory environment. The first came with the move of the Department of Home Economics out of Peabody Hall and into its own building in 1927. The old agriculture building, now called the Agriculture Annex Building, was renovated and included a laboratory environment housed within the basement of that building. The second change was in the leadership of the department. As Professor Henrietta Burton took the reins as head of the Home Economics Department in 1925. Burton, who came to the university from Columbia University, would expand the program toward her area of expertise, child welfare. She, along with instructor Olivia Smenner, continued to pursue the path set out by Professor Cade's first course. Burton and Smenner's new courses would include topics of child welfare and home and society. Home economics would only be housed in the old agriculture building for a short time before it would be moved to its present location, the current home economics building. With the help of Works Project Administration funds, construction of the new home economics building began in the 1939 school year. It was in this new building that a third development occurred. On October 23, 1933, the Federal Emergency Relief Administration authorized funding which would help in the creation of a nursery school laboratory. This laboratory would become a permanent feature of the program. It would be housed in the basement of the newly constructed Home Economics Building. The nursery school served two functions within the program. It offered students a place to keep their children who were three to four years old while the parents attended classes. However, in addition, it housed a learning laboratory which helped university students understand how young children grow and develop in the family. An influential professor, Dr. Mary Burton, came to the program as an adjunct professor in the summer of 1946 and eventually joined the faculty in 1948. Over the next 34 years, she would shape the direction of not only the child development program, but other areas of human development and family studies. Dr. Burton helped to add gerontology and lifespan development to the department as a new dimension to the traditional home economics coursework. 
one of the big things that I think I was trying to promote was an upgraded uh, child of child uh, or preschool programs. Mm -hmm. I felt that our preschool programs were not as high caliber as they should be in our community. And so we were working a lot on Im improving the preschool programs. And uh, this was not ever well understood, I felt, that, that there needed to be improvements. In addition to her professional expertise, Dr. Burton had a close relationship with her students. She often wrote thank you notes to show her appreciation of their efforts. Dear Anna, Irene, Jan, Linda, Mary, and Virginia, I was so impressed by all of your other guests last evening and with the manner in which you entertained us all. It was fun and delicious and the flower arrangements beautiful. Congratulations on your management abilities. Sincerely, Mary Burton. The nursery school would continue to thrive on campus in the new home economics building until it was moved to its current location just off campus. When we moved to the new facility for the nursery school, the space for observation was much greater than it had been in the uh, home economics building and it was adequate for its time. But uh, it was positive too in that uh, it had sound capabilities so that the students who were observing could hear what was going on in the laboratory from any space within the lab. I remember taking um the child guidance class that when the nursery school was located in the basement of the home economics building, we had screen wire around for our observation booth. Uh, the space was cramped too, and the playground was you know, right outside the building and uh, then became close right across from Mullins Library, which was not real conducive to some of the students who were still going to the library to study. So the relocation of the nursery school to Duncan Street, it's in a neighborhood. And um, I think that's the thing that the teachers like so much and the children about their playground is that it's surrounded by trees and, and birds and bees and flowers and things that, that cause children to feel more at home. While the nursery school program was evolving, a second emphasis was taking shape, an emphasis on infants and toddlers. In 1969, two local groups commissioned a study to determine the need for an infant development center once completed, the Developmental Child Care Association of Northwest Arkansas partnered with the United Campus Ministry to begin the first inklings of a program aimed at infants and toddlers. By 1972, the local effort had begun the program housed in local churches. Eventually, the group was able to construct a facility to house their new IDC. The consortium then began a working relationship with Dr. Mary Burton and her department head, Dr. Dorothy Larry. They proposed having university students assist in running the facility while at the same time providing the students with a laboratory experience involving young children. We always, uh, our, even our early uh, involvement with that, uh, it was to be a learning experience for the students. There was always someone in the background who was knowledgeable in this field and were helping the students learn. And also some of the students actually did research projects. Uh, from our point of view, I believe we have always considered it uh, an educational experience uh, as opposed to just custodial care of children. Over time, the church group approached the university about taking over the facility full time. Dr. Glenn Hardy, Dean of the College of Agriculture at that time, asked six private donors to help fund the project. Five stepped up to the plate and helped purchase the facility for the university. Under the leadership of Dr. Burton, a threefold mission was laid out for the growing program training university students, research of children and young families, 
and care for children of university students. This mission has been carried on by current faculty members. However, recently, most of the children at the IDC and nursery school are children of staff, faculty, or the community to help facilitate funding. Not only do we still have the program, we have a quality NAEYC accredited program. Both IDC and the nursery school are NAEYC accredited, and that doesn't happen uh, easily. The National Association for the Education of Young Children is the accrediting agency for the Child Development Laboratories. Founded in 1926, it is the world's largest association of professionals whose work is centered on young children and their families. The group, with its nearly 90,000 members, provides standards for early learning centers, such as the IDC and nursery school at the University of Arkansas. The NAEYC also provides standards for undergraduate instruction. Students learn how to create environments for young children to support a child's learning and development according to the best practice in the profession. However, the learning does not stop there. Students also learn how to appropriately connect with families to build family and community relationships, how to assess young children to support needs, how to build meaningful curriculum, and how to be an early childhood professional. This instruction is supported in the NAEYC accredited university laboratory schools where students watch all of the standards being modeled by faculty and graduate assistants. What is it? It's a gas pump. That's exactly what it is. The birth to kindergarten option is meant to give students a concentration that allows them more opportunities to work directly with young children and to gain the uh, skills that represent best practice in our field for adults working with children birth to eight. We feel that we respect an infant and allow the child with our great interest to develop at its own speed. The thing that fascinates a, a newborn child most is that hand. They don't need a rattle in that hand. You don't need to be shaking a rattle in their face to entertain them. They have a body that totally entertains them. Um, and you can just share that with them and watch them grow and develop in this way. That's the very basic beginning of it. And then I can remember watching children here crawl up the stairs for the first time, turn around and look back at you after they'd done it and just smile and share that with them. It's um, very, very rewarding to sit and see these things happen. I think the students are getting um, better training than they ever have because we have master teachers in place in all the classrooms. It's just been great uh, since I've been here. I like working with the graduate students and the undergraduate students and of course the young ones. Um, what I really enjoy about it is they're young and they're absorbing so much information and everything we tell them they just absorb it. We've embraced different philosophies at both centers I think. Uh, still not veered too far from, from what we've always taught, but we've all grown as faculty as well as uh, students when uh, new research is available and we have to relook uh, at what our ideas are and how this is uh, being put in practice in the lab schools. The students learn the body of research that we've accumulated in our field of child development and then when they go into the lab settings, they have the opportunity to demonstrate their research knowledge by being able to uh, develop and then implement research projects of their own design. I really enjoy working both with uh, undergraduates and graduate students. And I don't like to say, you know, I'm above you and I'm your boss. Um, I like to see us work as a team. I take their ideas and let them go with it. And uh, if they ask for my input, I gladly give it to them. The field of child development has exploded. We now see students going into uh, all kinds of different uh, fields. Um, for example, working for a major toy company, we have another student, many students who are child life specialists working within the hospital setting. It's a fantastic opportunity to understand 
families as a system and how children fit into that. I was accepted into the Palace Acquire Management Training Program through the U.S. Air Force and I'll be starting up there at the end of May. Uh, it's a two-year program. I'll go through and learn the ins and outs of being a center director and then I'll get relocated um, to another base. And I really hope someday to get to go overseas and the main reason is overseas Child development is not like it is here, and I've learned a lot working at the nursery school about playing with the children and teaching through play and um, just all areas of development, and I feel like that could be really helpful in another country. Exciting to me is the fact that these careers are becoming more lucrative, and the perception used to be, oh, major in child development, you can't have a a decent salary, but that's no longer true. You put one leg up and one leg down. I took a group of students to a SICA meeting, Southern Early Childhood Association meeting in Little Rock. And uh, we walked into the Peabody Hotel and there was a huge banner. If, if you're familiar with that lobby and how big it is, that banner was way up high, and, and it said, something important happens at the Peabody every day. And it went click in my mind. Something important happens every day at the IDC and the nursery school. And that is what I think, that's what we give to the communities. We give something important because when we, impassion people about what we're doing. We impassion every program that is touched. You have people in charge of it who have made it their life work to study in this area and who have already turned out students who have done a marvelous job in the field. But the most important part of it all is from the point of view of the, the baby. A lot of times people talk about uh, caring for children as babysitting or as childcare rather than uh, an educational childcare program. So I, I think it is, is a real challenge for, for us as Arkansans and people in the United States to try to have the kind of educational opportunities available for people to understand that children are capable of learning. I did it! I caught it! Arkansas is um, 49th out of the 50 states in terms of the number of children who grow up living in poverty. And this has all kinds of effects on their child development. And it's been shown that growing up as a young child in poverty has far-reaching effects even often into adulthood. If you can get the right start in life, and heavens knows the parents that we work with here um, are dedicated people and are going to do all they can, but nowadays both parents work and uh, they can't always be with their children, so they have to be somewhere, and they should be in an environment where they will make the best progress they can, not only physically, but mentally. And it's been shown through research that if children from poverty backgrounds engage in high-quality preschool education, that there are significant differences between those children who almost 40 years ago were in a quality preschool program versus children who were not in preschool. We believe that child development is a science and it is as, as valuable as any other four-year degree. We know there are a number of states in the United States that have birth through kindergarten teacher licensure. And this is what we're looking at for our students. And the things that you need to know to work with children under seven, under four, are much different than what you would need to learn with children from kindergarten through grade four. It's what's going to happen out in the state, not only in our state, but some others around here, when people, if they are uh, licensed to teach and, and have the experiences that they're given in this program, they could do some really wonderful things to improve the educational level of, of our people and maybe even change their lives and that isn't something that's going to be easily measured. <laughs>
When we began to talk about new space, it became clear to us as we surveyed what the architects initially did, that they did not have the concept of the space the students need. And we invited uh, the architects to sit down with a group of students. They sat there for more than two hours taking notes from the students' perspective. And the new plans for that center have beautiful spaces for students to study children, observation booths that will be surrounded by glass one made mirror. So we're excited by the prospect of wonderful observation. And because we know the power of observation in teaching students about children and their needs, we are very excited. I can't wait for that day. And part of the excitement of, to me with the students being involved in it too is that they were reflecting what they had learned from the classroom and from observation and being with children. They were reflecting that and the fact that they cared enough to do it because they knew they weren't going to be around when this happened. But they were still very much involved in, in the process knowing that this would be there for other students. We have a particular focus on conducting research that will help improve the lives of children and families who are living in rural poverty around the state and across the nation. Currently, we're being held back in our efforts to conduct this kind of research due to lack of research space and facilities. One of the programs that I would like to see helped today, just right today, is the Infant Development Center, which doesn't seem to get very good funding for some reason. And uh, I would like to see that have more uh, recognition and status and funding. I think it's a very important program. In the whole state of Arkansas, we have a reputation for pretty good child development, preschool de programs, and we have been a part of that. Maybe not as directly as some people might think, or I should say more directly than some people might think, but um, I just think there isn't anything that is more important than good family life and child rearing. I'm, I think we ought to recognize the importance of family life and especially human development family studies. I realized that there's much work, some of which I was involved in at one time, and this university is very, very important. Uh, things like that go on as a result of the research that's done here, so this nanotechnology now, that's all very important. There's nothing more important than getting a small child started in the right direction, in my opinion. <laughs> and I don't believe many people will argue with that. <laughs> the role of children on the University of Arkansas campus has grown over the last 80 years. From its early days of education on the development of children, to the introduction of laboratory study for young children, to the addition of scientific research conducted at these facilities. It has become a program with far-reaching implications to fields far beyond education.